Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be all about walk around on my bike 2.0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what bling I've put on this bike to make it 18 seconds a lap quicker around Snetterton. If you haven't subscribed, do it. Just want to start with a thank you to uh, all of you subscribers out there. Um, really grateful of you who have stuck with me the whole way through the journey. Like I say, it's been getting on for nearly two years. Um, so thank you once again. On the surface of things, it looks pretty much like the same bike. We've accumulated a few sponsors now, which is absolutely wicked. It's nice that people actually um, have kind of taken me seriously, if you like. Um, and invested into the Womble Racing brand and kind of get what it's all about. So uh, first of all, big thanks to you guys. As you can see, tyres have changed. Before I was on the Pirelli Supercourses, but now I thought I'd give the Mets a track day slicks a little go, see what they're all about. Um, to be perfectly truthful, they don't feel a lot different. In fact, I don't know, I think I might have had a little bit more confidence in the Pirellis. Um, but still, you know, they speak for themselves, lap times have come down. But in terms of how they actually feel, how they ride, I've not really noticed much of a difference. What is cool is they're bi-directional, so you can turn the tyre around um, and it's, it kind of works the same either way. The tyre's on, so it gives you a little bit more life on the tyre. Brake pads have changed. I actually changed these the other day on a track day. Got a lot of life out of the Cynic pads. In fact, there's probably only half a mil left in it. So uh, obviously time for a change. I thought I'd give um, the SBS dual carbon pads a go. So that's what's in there now. That's what I tried out for the first time the other day. And to go out, first of all, out of the pit lane, they're a little bit weird. They're a bit vague. You've got to give them a few um, squeezes and, and kind of don't go too quick straight away. Uh, get them up to temperature and my God, they bite. I thought my eyes were going to pop out of my head. I was able to brake so hard. Now then, these are Renthal medium compound. Why have I changed them? Because the existing ones were like 28,000 miles old, mate. There was absolutely no grip on them whatsoever. And actually, through your hands and, um, well, through your hands is kind of like the main contact point on the bike, isn't it? And, and the seat, which we'll come on to in a sec. So uh, yeah, it was good to update that and actually get a bit of support and a bit of um, reassurance through kind of the main contact point of your body onto your bike. Get a load of this Solo 2 lap timer. It's not actually mine. Um, it's been lent, Martin Buckles has lent that to me. He's next um, stock thousand rider from the early 2000s. He's been helping me out a lot this year with uh, advice and sort of helping me out on track and stuff. Thank you, Martin. Um, basically the timer is wicked so it gives you like real real time feedback um, let me show you so there's some LEDs in here if they're showing red that you're then you're slower um, if you're showing green then you're quicker it's quite simple really if you want to make a quick line choice or something for a quarter inch experiment and see whether that works and whether that makes you quicker then you know from uh, from the from the lap timer straight away you can obviously download that to your laptop or whatever um, and it's brilliant because it gives you like a GPS overlay. You can look for your corners, look for your sessions and see actually whether if you've taken a different line for a corner or, or broke later into a corner, you can see whether it's actually worked or and helped you or not. And on lap timing, by the way, let me know in the comments what you think, whether lap timing should be allowed on track days or not. Personally, I think lap timing should determine what group you sit in on a track day now i get people want to go around cruise in whatever group they're in they want to enjoy being on track they don't want to be under any pressure etc that's cool that's fine but for those people that want to kind of progress and and do all of that i think it would be really beneficial if you segregated into as a maybe fast group into like a time and bracket so that you don't get those bottlenecks in the interviews group you get people who don't want to progress up into the fast group because 
I don't think they're too quick when actually they probably are. So let me know in the comments what you think. You may have noticed when I've done the little walk around at the start, that's not a factory seat. That's not how it came out. There was about 50 mil of seat foam on there. Now we're down to 20. So what I've done is I stripped off the fabric, stripped off the foam, um, filled in kind of the voids in the middle of the seat and then replaced it with this stuff here. So it's just literally motorbike seat foam, uh, 20 mil of it. And why have I done it is so I can feel a little bit more as to what's going on with the back end of the bike. So I can feel whether it's sliding now, I can feel whether the shock was working too hard. Um, so yeah, well worth looking at doing and that's a nice, simple mod. And then I'm gonna show you now what's underneath the seat, which is even cooler. Check this out. It's like Knight Rider, isn't it? You remember that show? I got it just for that. Now, actually, um, I got it because the bike was massively down on power. Um, so I'd like to say that, well, I'm actually glad that it kind of um, gives me an excuse to be slow. Yeah. So it was about 20% down on power. And now, since we've had that fitted, we've had it done, we've, we've had it set up, um, we're kind of slightly above on power than what it was when it came out of the showroom. So, um, dead chuff for that. Look at that. It's a bit fancy, isn't it? Looks nice. That's all that matters, isn't it? Um, not really, no. It actually really helps with the riding lap times have come down massively since I've had that on. Now, whether it's in my head or whether it's in the bike, well, I know it's in the bike because I can feel it. It doesn't feel like I'm riding a seesaw anymore. It's actually a lot of support in the back end. Uh, it means I can push out the corners a lot sooner with a lot more vigor and purpose. Um, so yeah, Darren's put a lot of time and work into that over at MCT. Thank you, Darren. Uh, he's actually been on hand on a couple of track days as well to make some changes to that just to kind of really refine it so thank you um yeah mega there you have it those are the changes that i've made if there's anything that you would do differently let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you think i should try or anything that you think actually matt what are you thinking why would you even do that let me know um the changes that i've made have made a significant improvement on lap times that's obviously paired with, um, you know, actual quality track time and and kind of taking the guesswork out of the riding a little bit and writing things down and making notes as we go. So it's not just all down to those modifications there. You can't just buy a bling and it'll make you quicker. It only goes so far. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks if you subscribed already. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Um, I've got a couple more videos lined up for the near future. Thank you. See you in the next video.